Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we'll be covering the full story of DC's 2023 four-part Christmas miniseries, Batman Santa Claus Silent Night, which gives us a quite unique origin story for both Krampus and Santa. So with that said, let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so going into this story, we start out in Gotham City, where we find a group of Christmas carolers being all happy and merry and just caroling through the streets until out of nowhere, they're all just slaughtered by what appears to be a group of bat-like creatures. And it isn't too long before their bodies are seen by a delivery guy who calls it in. So at this point, about 30 minutes later, the police are checking it out as Batman and Damien make their way here. So right away, Damien's just like, man, somebody really don't like carolers. And Bruce is like, first of all, only say things like that around me. And secondly, try to get to a point where you only think them. But as they check out the area, Batman already has the suspicion that they're dealing with someone completely new because all of the usual suspects, they're already accounted for and contained. And upon closer investigation, they notice the victims have single punctures in their neck. They're completely drained of their blood. And Damien even notices that there are three toed barefoot tracks in the snow, similar to what would have been made by Dr. Langstrom. But Bruce quickly tells Damien, man bat's already accounted for and he doesn't do exsanguination. So to help them out, Batman called for an expert to step in. And as the eyes of the snow figure behind them starts glowing, Damien believes that whoever did this has come back for more, only to find out that it's just their expert who's come to help, Zatanna. And as soon as she gets there, she does an optography spell, which causes the eyes of the victims to project the memories of the last things that they saw. And as soon as they see this memory, Damien's just like, oh my God, it's Lexington from Gargoyles. Okay, I'm just playing, he didn't say that. But right away, Zatanna realizes that this creature is one of the Drog, who are a vampiric strain of the Norse undead. But as Zatanna goes on to elaborate more about the Drog to Batman, he tells her to keep talking normally and don't turn her head just before he turns around and catches one of the Drog who are trying to sneak up on them from behind. And just after Batman tags this one with a Batarang, it just takes off. But right behind them, Damien is snatched up by another one. So Bruce tells Damien to hurry up and stretch his legs as he jumps up and grabs a hold because Batman knows that the Drog won't be able to carry them both. And it works because it drops them. But just after it does, it circles back around only for the Drog to get staked through its heart by Santa Claus himself. And it's just like, man, how did Santa make a better entry than Batman? And as soon as he gets here, the funny thing is, Batman's just like, what's up, Chris? Been a minute. Just super casual as Santa jumps down. And Damien's head is turning back and forth so quick because he's just like, wait, what? And for Zatanna, who knew about Santa Claus before, she just never thought she'd get the chance to meet him. And Damien's just like, you can't be serious. I don't believe in Santa Claus. As if the man wasn't standing right here. And Santa just responds like, you and me both, kid. And right there, it's just kind of like, man, dang, Santa, what happened? To where next, suddenly Batman gets a call from Nightwing who lets him know that there's more of these things attacking on the south side of the cemetery. And right now, both him and Barbara are fighting them off as best as they can. So Batman tells Nightwing that him and the others are on their way, and he gives him the heads up that these things are some type of vampire. So Dick relays the message, telling Barbara and everyone else to watch their neck. But this attack is happening so fast. One of these cops get bitten, so Barbara calls an EMT, and she tells the other cop that shooting's not gonna help, and he's better off keeping an eye on his partner and putting pressure on that wound. But to be honest, neither Nightwing or Batgirl are equipped at the moment with vampire hunting gear. So the most they can really do is slow these things down and give the civilians an opportunity to run away. And it isn't long before they start to get overwhelmed. While Nightwing's just like, sure could use that backup. As Santa swoops down, impaling multiple drugs with his reindeer while telling Dick that he got his message. And right away, Nightwing can just not believe that he has just been saved by Santa Claus. And really quickly, the rest of these drugs get cleared out. When Batman gets there with Zatanna and she does a spell to open a window to the other side of the world, which just beams in sunlight, burning the drugs and sending them away. And when this happens, Batman is just like, before anyone asks, yes, I put a tracker on one of them. And really, I don't think no one had to ask because that's one of those things you just kind of assume at this point. And from here, Santa tells them that they at least have the day since the drug are going to need to rest up and they're not going to attack again until nightfall. But Santa tells Batman that they will need more help as the two of them walk off so Santa can fill in Batman and he can call the right people to come help them out. And as soon as they leave, Nightwing is just like, man, so the stories about Batman and Santa are true. And Barbara's just like, you knew? But in Dick's defense, he thought the stories were just things that Batman would say to make Santa sound cool. And Damien's just like, well, he's not a jolly little elf or nice to kids, 
what's the deal with this guy? So Zatanna summons a book from her library, which has many stories about Mr. Claus, Kris Kringle, and Father Christmas. So she figures now that they've seen him, she can determine which story is closer to his actual history. And the book that she ends up reading from tells a story connected to the Scandinavian myths around the time of the ancient Vikings who honored Wotan, Freya, and Thor. And it speaks of there being a mighty woodsman, a crafter, who showed up at a time when dangerous creatures from Asgard wandered down into the regular world. So the Nordic people prayed for help and their heroes heard them. And the book goes on to say, every year they gathered for the wild hunt, a ride to capture the beasts or slay the most deadly ones. Our craftsmen would ride his stag alongside the greatest hunters in the Norse pantheon. Loud thunder from their charge would echo all over the Northlands. The hunters would split up and seek out different monsters. Our friends searched the forest for a fierce beast man called the Krampus but he found the beast man to be less deadly than legends described. He saw no need to slay Krampus, who only used his fearsome visage to amuse himself. So the woodsman would just lead him back to Svartalheim, and they were the last returning from the wild hunt when a storm closed the path home. Some say that it was Ragnarok or that Awoten simply forgot the woodsman. The path never opened again. The legends of the gods faded and the two remained among our kind. Krampus's nature was the same. He couldn't stop scaring children. So as a token of apology, the craftsmen made toys for the youth. The two continued searching the land for monsters. But right there as Atana's reading the story, Santa just walks through it calling them silly stories and telling them that he'll be near until the drug are dealt with. So Barbara tells him like, don't you got something you need to be doing soon? And I mean referring to Christmas, which for Santa, he just tells them that he hasn't had to make Christmas happen for centuries. And the reason why he's come back now is because after hunting the drug for centuries, they've somehow been set loose because someone has freed them from the catacombs that Santa sealed himself underground in a location that only he knew about. And right there, Damien's just like, it was Krampus, because he noticed the hoof prints earlier next to the carolers who were attacked, which weren't made by hooves like that of a deer, but instead a cloven hoof, like a ram. And on top of that, the tracks were biped. So whatever this thing was, it was walking on two hooves. But suddenly, one of these drugs start glowing as a strange fauna comes growing out of its chest. And the voice from another one of them says, a gift for ye, tis the season. As this weird flower just spews this green goo all over Zatanna, as the voice goes on to say, I cannot have a magician hunting me. She might have been able to lock me away. The toy maker. Together we created this wonderful day. Then you threw me into the void. Now I am back in the world. And I am going to take our special day and make it mine. All the horrors we trapped. You should have slain. You should have killed me. I will free them all. And Christmas will become the day of misery, ho. 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 Because Krampus is back. And man, is he pissed. But there's so much more going on here that we'll find out. Because after this, Krampus disappears. And Santa takes Zatanna to see what he can do to help her out. But before Santa goes, he leaves them a box. Which right there has Damien like, it, it could be a bomb. Only for Dick to tell him that he understands Damien's had a rough upbringing. But Christmas doesn't work like that because Santa leaves toys. But Batman lets them know that this isn't a toy. It's a message and he can't listen to it now because there's too many bystanders. So he calls for the Batmobile, which is the only good self-driving car, at least according to Nightwing. Because I mean, I ain't trying to mess nothing up just in case Elon want to bless your boy real quick. Just saying. But after this, for a brief moment, we see Krampus who's watching and noticing the fear as a number of voices tell him that Santa has help. So Krampus must move quickly to free the rest and destroy the spirit of his stolen day. Which for Krampus, he responds and the voices will leave me. And they tell him yes. Which right there just hints to us that there's quite a bit more going on with Krampus than what it seems on the surface level. Cause next, when we go back to Batman and the others, we find that the message that was in this box, it's actually a lifelike retelling of memories that Santa found to be too painful for him to tell himself. And for a moment, they seem so real that Damien tries to kick one of these kids heads off for trying to pick on a little girl. <laughs> Good thing Damien wasn't around back then cause them kids would've got it. But in this memory, we find that Krampus goes after these kids who are picking on that little girl as he snatches up the bad ones while telling them that he's gonna eat them as he throws them in his bag like he's the collector. And it's here where Santa suddenly shows up. And right away, Damien and the others can tell that this was actually the two of them working together just to scare the kids and either get them to stop bullying or stealing. And year after year, when these kids became adults, 
gradually society got better because their routine worked. But eventually when we jump forward a number of generations, we find that it came to a point where Krampus was no longer feared, with the kids growing up to become adults, and a lot of people just kind of knew the song and dance. So one day Krampus was like, you know what, bump this, I'm about to start eating people, since they think I'm a joke. And right here as the story's going, present day Santa steps in, and he more or less gives Barbara and the others an update on Zatanna, as he shows them that right now his helpers are doing everything they can to treat her, from the effects of what was a poison flower from Niflheim. And so far, things are looking positive because they've stopped the poison from spreading, and Santa tells them that Zatanna's strong, so she'll likely pull through. But as we go back to this memory, we pick up with Santa finding Krampus, empty handed. So Santa asks him, what did you do with the children? And Krampus told him he ate them. He ate them all. So with hearing this, Santa used a touchstone to banish Krampus to the space between realms because he can no longer trust his old friend. But just after doing this, one of the children's parents heard their kids laughing nearby and come to find out Krampus just hid the kids and bribed them with treats so that they would play along and make his scary performance seem convincing. So immediately Santa raced to the space between realms to try to find his friend, knowing that he had made a mistake and he searched for years only to come up with nothing. And prior to just recently, Santa just assumed that Krampus was dead. And now that Krampus is back, the touchstone Santa used to send Krampus away is missing. And as a bit of an extra piece of information, we come to find out that as the result of the Night Terrors event, where borders of reality were torn, this allowed Krampus to find his way back. And in hindsight, Santa regrets not noticing how much it hurt Krampus not to be feared. And now that he's been lost in the darkness for centuries, that's only driven him mad. And Santa just finds it hard to believe that his friend has become a killer. But before ending this communication by way of projection, Santa tells Batman that he'll return tonight and help when the drug awake. But Batman tells him no, he's found friends who can help with the drug. So all he wants Santa to do is focus on helping Zatanna. So Santa agrees and he tells Batman that he'll do everything in his power. And so from here we jump over to Bloodhaven 12 hours later as the sun's going down and a ton of these drugs are just under the bridge ready to get back out there and just terrorize the neighborhood. And it's kind of funny because they're here talking to each other like over the ages a lot has changed but even still blood is blood and one of them is just like ah tastes like oil. And I mean, I don't know what kind of blood he been drinking, but to me, it was just funny to see that. But before they all head out, they see another drug approaching, but they notice that her call sounds a little weird. And as she gets closer, they see that she's holding some kind of light, which for these guys ain't a good sign. And we come to find out fairly quickly that this is actually Miss Martian, who's flown out here to draw these guys out and more or less lead them into a trap. And she makes sure not to fly too fast so that her and the others can catch these guys slipping. But with her trying to fly slow, the draw get a little too close for comfort. And that's when a couple of arrows come flying in. And we see that Batman's got Miss Martian working with Green Arrow and Canary. And it's kind of funny when Oliver points out that there's way more drugs here than what Batman led them to believe. Almost as if he set them up for this to be their end. But as it turns out, the three of these guys work together quite nicely. Because these drugs who are very much like bats, they rely on their hearing. So Canary hits them with a sonic scream just before Oliver goes all badass with the arrows. And just after this, for a brief moment, we see some of what Krampus has been up to as we find him in the moors of Scotland. And it's here where the voices who have been speaking to him tell him that he's running out of time because it'll soon be Christmas. So he needs to release the warriors. And after this, the giants that him and Santa locked away long ago. And when his work is done, he'll be set free. And meanwhile, when we head back over to Oliver, we find that he's run out of badass. <laughs> so Damien and Bruce have made their way there to help him out. And just after the rest of these drugs are taken care of, a red streak approaches, shooting across the sky, which at first has Canary thinking that it's another one of these drugs. But Oliver tells her that it's moving too fast to be one of those. And Batman tells them both that it's not, because it's him. And Batman knew that he'd hear about what's happening, as we see Superman land right in front of them with his eyes glowing red as he tells Bruce, you never said that you knew Santa. <laughs> and it's like, man, Superman's trust is all messed up because that's just not information that you keep from a close friend. I'm just saying. All right, so for this one, we pick up from the aftermath of Krampus following the instructions that he was given by the voices who told him to release the monsters that him and Santa put away centuries ago, which now takes us to Hyde Park in London, where the Harpy Warriors have been set free. And in their case, unlike the drugs that we saw in the first couple issues, who are your vampiric creatures that drink blood and turn others 
because that's pretty much their nature. In the case of the Harpies, they're practically a small army, and from what we're shown after they were released, they needed instructions. So Krampus instructed them to attack this specific area. So that's precisely what they're doing. And now, even with the military getting involved, they're really not able to do much. But fortunately for them, Hawk Girl shows up and she's able to save at least one of these pilots. And not long after, she's accompanied by the Green Lantern, Sojourner Mullen. Because for these guys, it's a really similar situation to what we saw with Green Arrow and Black Canary, though in this case with a little bit less intel. Because they were just told by Batman to show up here and handle whatever's happening. Because keep in mind, even in Batman's case, he doesn't have all the details. And he definitely didn't get the prep time needed to distribute a viable solution to every member of the team. But this whole thing takes a turn when Wonder Woman shows up. Because right now, with both Kendra and Joe working on piecing together a plan, Wonder Woman just tells them that these things are flying in formation. So just break their formation and keep breaking it. Because all she really knows about these things is that they are harpies, but there's some ancient breed that she's never seen before. Because much like how Zatanna didn't recognize the drugs, as far as the specific type that they were, Wonder Woman's not familiar with these harpies because Santa and Krampus locked them away so long ago. But for a moment here, Joe ends up asking Kendra if she's able to at least speak to them. And Kendra's just like, nah, like what you thought I was Aquaman for birds or something? <laughs> like she just tried her. But with hearing this, Wonder Woman's like, I can. Cause for Diana, she wanted to break their formation and watch these harpies reform again so that she could find their elder and use the lasso of truth on her to open a line of communication. And to do this, Diana just has Joe and Kendra hold the other harpies back to buy her a bit of time, as the eldest tells her everything. And Diana's able to defuse the situation rather quickly, because as far as the harpies being instructed to attack this location, Diana's like, okay, well, you guys did that. And now that it's done, you can stop. And from there, Diana asked who sent them. And that's when she discovers that it was Krampus. And just after this, we head over to Batman and the others, where now we got Blue Beetle who's joined the squad. And you can tell there's this ongoing theme happening here with Batman not giving everyone all the details because he has everyone meet up by a tree, but he doesn't really tell any of them why. And I mean, most of them know the situation at hand, but they don't realize why they're here until one of Santa's elves show up. And even when this elf gets here, Damien, once again, is just assuming that this is an enemy because he's been on edge this whole series. But as it turns out, Batman had them all meet here so that Santa's helper could transport the entire team to Norway so they could help Santa, who's currently fighting a serpent. And it really isn't until just now when I said that out loud, where now I'm just like, well, this is actually a thing. But as soon as Batman and the other heroes get here, Superman just zooms in, punching the serpent in the face, just so he can get a chance to get up close and talk to Santa. And for him, much like the other heroes, Santa remembers Clark's home address as a child, and Santa even remembers the letter that Clark wrote when he was six, when all he wanted was a coffee maker for Ma and Pa Kent. But as Superman is preoccupied with this wonderful conversation he's having with Santa, the serpent comes back up from behind him, and Jaime tries to warn Clark about it coming back around, only for the two of them to get chomped on. And to Superman's surprise, he thought he knocked this thing out, and Jaime tells him, like, I mean, it was a good hit, but no. But also, while they're inside the serpent, Santa speaks to them from outside, knowing that both Clark and Jaime can hear him with both the super hearing and the alien machine. So Santa ends up telling them that they're in the perfect place to lead the serpent away from the land. And he tells Superman to just fly this thing up and follow him using his x-ray vision so they can move it without having to fight it. And as for everyone else down below who had nothing to do this whole time, next, Santa's helper takes them to Greenland after getting the update of where Krampus is now. And when they get here, they see him attempting to free the next group of creatures who were locked away, which now makes it priority one for the heroes to stop him before that even happens. Because the last thing they want is for him to release something worse and decrease their odds of success. But as they try to stop him, Green Arrow has a bit of a Hawkeye moment because he tries to shoot Krampus with a trank, only for Krampus to turn around and catch it. And out of everyone here, I'd have to say that Black Canary, she's the only one who really got a good hit in by way of using her sonic scream. But aside from that, things kind of get a little embarrassing when Krampus grabs Miss Martian and he just starts beating everybody else with her as she apologizes for being used this way. And then next, Superman, Santa, and Blue Beetle make their way here. And when they do, you would think that this would be pretty much the end. 
because the big guns are here, but instead we get a bit of a wild twist. But first, Santa admits that he stopped sending the different creatures to what he'd call the wild space after defeating them because he believed that was a death sentence. So over time, he just started locking the different creatures away, regardless of how evil they were. And that's why these different creatures are locked away in these different locations. But part of that reasoning also goes to the fact that a lot of these creatures were the last of their kind. So he also didn't want to send them into extinction. But right here, as Superman is holding Krampus, he starts saying, this one has been in our realm before. They think they win when they lose. And right there, Batman asks Santa, like, hey, uh, did your boy always talk like this? Cause something ain't right. As Krampus goes on to say, by way of the voices we saw speaking to him, now speaking through him, he goes on to say both, take the mighty man, I remain in the wild one. And this turns the tables, cause now we got possessed Superman and possessed Krampus on the same team. And it's a twist that none of the other heroes saw coming, so they're not even ready. But the surprises don't stop there, cause next Krampus snatches up Damien, which in a way seems like we've got the old Krampus back and that he's somehow back to his old playful self. But we'll get back to his situation in a little bit. Cause for now, he just snatches up Damien, opens up a portal and they're out, which now still leaves us with the possessed Superman, who's going full tilt on the glacier to release more of the monsters that Santa had locked away long ago, which quickly turns this into an all out brawl in Greenland on the night before Christmas. And amongst all this chaos, Batman, he's multitasking. Cause right now he's also trying to reach out to Damien to see if he's still got a signal and figure out where exactly Krampus took him, which from here takes us back to Damien. And come to find out, Damien's not that far, cause he's still in Greenland, in a location underground, which keeps causing his signal to drop. So Damien just starts to record his transmission. So when he gets a few more signal bars, his comms will just send that entire recording to Batman. And right now, in spite of him trying to pick this lock, nothing's working. So Damien goes on to say that he noticed Krampus called this place a gnome hall, but Damien's not hoping to get any help from the gnomes because they've all been long dead. But it's here where Damien hears the conflict between Krampus and the voice that's trying to take over. As Krampus is going back and forth with this thing that's telling him that killing the kid is the only way Krampus can go back to his life of being a wild creature in the forest. And with overhearing this conflict, Damien notices the only thing that's keeping him alive right now is this inner conflict. And it gives Damien an idea. But first, when we head back over to the heroes, we see Santa over here just being a badass and saving Oliver Queen in the process. But in the case of the possessed Superman, who's really not going in like Superman could, cause this thing that jumped from Krampus to Clark. And we'll talk more about what it is in a little bit. But as it stands right now, this thing doesn't understand the full capabilities of Superman. Cause it's not using heat vision, it's not taking advantage of his super speed. So Batman wants to get this thing out of Superman before it figures it out. So right now it's Blue Beetle's time to shine. Cause Batman just looks to Jaime and he says, Beetle, take down Superman. And he does by using his scarab to generate kryptonite radiation. And Jaime admits that he's a bit scared doing this cause he doesn't want to put too much into it and kill Clark. But Batman tells him to keep doing it, keep going because Clark is tough, he can take it. And eventually we see that there were actually two who were possessing Superman as they make their way out of him and attempt to jump to someone else. But Jaime and Bruce make sure to give Superman some space so these things don't jump into them. And eventually they just fizzle out and go back into the void. But now with Superman down, Batman tells Beetle that he's gonna need a two terravolt burst to restart Superman's heart. But after generating kryptonite, Beetle doesn't have that kind of power right now. But this ends up getting resolved when one of these monsters bang on a mountain and create an avalanche, which more than anything else really just shook the heroes up. And around this time, Diana, Joe, and Kendra make their way there to help out. And it isn't until now where Santa notices Superman coming to his senses and sounding like himself again, where we learn where those voices came from. Cause while Superman was possessed, he noticed that these voices were those of exiles who were left in a world between worlds, who were stuck in a place where if you're left too long, you can lose your physical form. And it's a place that Superman recognized because these voices were once prisoners in the Phantom Zone. Which for me, I kind of like that twist because the Phantom Zone can do that to you after thousands of years. And it makes sense that after Night Terrors, these Phantoms escape, they found Krampus in the void, and they used him to make their way here. And you guys know me, I don't mind outlandish plot threads because as long as they connect, we good. But after this, when we head over to Damien, we see that Krampus is still struggling with this Phantom who's telling him to kill the child when all Krampus wants to do is scare him. So quickly, Damien thinks about what he learned in Santa's memories, as well as the information from Zatanna's book, to think back on what the other kids did to get Krampus to take them home. And as soon as Damien figures it out, 
he starts crying and telling Krampus that he wants to go home to his father while saying that he doesn't want to be bad and to please send him home. Which of course, this is Damien putting on an act to either buy time or actually get him out of there. You know, whichever comes first. Meanwhile, with the other heroes, they end up splitting up to go after the monsters who have just taken off, while the others who are here stay to help Batman go and find Damien. And what ends up happening, Santa takes them to a nearby tree, and it's here where he tells them that in the old days, listening through the trees is how he heard everyone's wishes, because there once was a time when everyone had a tree in their home. So Santa uses this tree listening method that he's been doing to search for Damien and project his voice so others can hear. And remember, right now Damien, he's crying for daddy because that's the plan. So at first Barbara's like, it's Damien, as if the kid were actually in despair. And I mean, he kind of is, but you know what I'm trying to say. But Bruce knows that Damien is putting on an act and he's trying to buy some time. But now that Santa has Damien's exact location, they're all able to head there and help him out. But at this point, the Phantom, who had taken over Krampus, it now realizes that Damien was faking it. So it snatches Damien out the cage, as Batman, Santa, and the others make their way there. And in a last ditch effort, this Phantom tries to open a doorway to the netherworld to send everyone there and lock them away. But instead, the heroes are able to hold Krampus up to it as the Phantom gets sucked out and sent away, which now restores Krampus back to his old self. And it's really adorable what happens here because Krampus just picks up Damien and he takes him back to Bruce while looking at Damien and saying, remember, Krampus is always watching. And it's just perfect because it also puts a little smile on Bruce's face. But on top of that, I also appreciate that the heroes took the time to actually save Krampus instead of just banishing him again. And you know, throw out the Krampus with the bathwater. Cause now Santa, the heroes, everyone, they know better. They know it wasn't his fault. And right after this, these guys make their way to catch up with the other heroes who chase down the monsters who are running amok so they all can take care of them together. But instead of putting these monsters back on ice or throwing them into the void, they find a solution by way of Green Lantern who lets them know of a planetoid where they can just drop these guys off on. Way to go, Joe. And after this, in honor of the old tradition, with it still being Christmas Eve, Santa gets ready to head out and make some deliveries, and he invites Krampus to go along with him. But it doesn't stop there, because Santa tells Damien that he remembers the letter that Damien wrote when he was five, which right there, I gotta admit, I'm just as surprised as Nightwing. But in this letter, Damien asked Santa for a satellite so that he could track down all of his enemies. And unfortunately, Damien never got that gift. But to Santa, the sadder thing is that Damien never really had a childhood. So to try and make up for some of that, Santa invites Damien to help him hand out gifts tonight, as long as it's okay with his father. So Batman agrees. And to finish this off, all the heroes just come together for what at first looks like the Justice League Unlimited intro, which takes us into one great big Christmas party, where we also get the surprise of seeing Zatanna show up, fully recovered just in time for the festivities. But aside from that, it just might be possible that the Flash may have a drinking problem because he's knocking back a whole lot of this eggnog. So hopefully a friend will step in and make sure that he doesn't run home tonight. <laughs> but jokes aside, I'm sure his metabolism is going to burn it off, like in real time as he's drinking it. But I'm not going to front. If I was at this party, I'd be keeping an eye on him. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.